Well, I just finished up the Bass Pro Tour at Lake Fork in Texas and uh, did not go as planned. I really, uh, really felt like I could do well in this one. Uh, I love fishing at Lake Fork. I love fishing in Texas, period. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a tough one. I don't even know where I ended up. I did not make the knockout round. And uh, so I'll be down there in the standings, you know, after this event. But, uh, you know, it was really a really fun event. I uh, kind of got decoyed early on. I, I really, I really looked, uh, well, I started off shallow in practice looking for fish. I knew that it's been warm and the fish should have been pulling up. I didn't really see anything. I didn't see any fish moving up shallow. I didn't catch any up shallow. And the very first point that I ran out to and, and graphed around with my Garmin units, uh, I found some good rebel rocks some some shell beds or, or rough, you know, rough bottom, hard bottom uh, with some trees mixed in. And I threw the Lucky Craft uh, 2.5 DD DRS, has that uh, a deep rattle sound to it. And the wind was blowing a little bit, it was choppy, the conditions were right. And uh, man, I found a good school of fish um, offshore. And not very deep though. The, the top of the stuff that I was fishing was maybe 10 or 12 feet. And I had the boat sitting in about 15, uh, 15 to 18. And I was throwing this, the, the DD 2.5 on the Tattooly Elite rod from Daiwa that I designed, it's an eight foot cranking rod. And I used the, the Tattooly Elite bait casting reel and i'm telling you with that eight foot rod and that tattoo elite reel which is designed for distance casting uh, it's amazing how far you can get this this bait and i would say traditionally it's about a 12 to 14 foot running bait but i promise you i can hit 17 18 feet with this for how far you can cast that thing so i was able to grind that thing in the bottom and uh, found a good school uh, could catch them every cast and there are those three to five pounders and i ran across the lake the very first spot that I pulled up on, again, I idled around with Garmin. I found some rough stuff, a little brush pile down there as well. And uh, threw the 2.5 out there and hooked one that uh, I couldn't stop. It was, it was so big. And I didn't want to catch anymore, so I threw a jig out there and didn't get a bite. Um, I go, man, I, I know there's more down there. I threw the 2.5 out there again and caught a six pounder. And uh, But this one was shallower. I mean, it would, you would only make a couple wines and you'd hit the bottom. So I go, I wonder if they'll bite the jerk bait. And I, I had a slender 127 tied on, uh, an Aurora Black, and I'm throwing that on a 6'9 Tattoo Elite Seth Fighter rod. Uh, this time I went with the, the brand new SV reel. Now that SV reel uh, is traditionally better for casting lighter baits, but the thing I really like about this with a jerk bait especially is that it's so light in your hand. Now this is a 6'9 medium light action rod. You put this Tattoo SV reel on there, it's so light, it's so effortless to cast a jerkbait and work a jerkbait. And I could cast that, that Slender 127 so far, I mean, farther than I needed to throw it. And uh, first cast of that, I caught a six pounder on that spot as well. So I had two really good schools where there's a lot of fish grouped up on a spot. And uh, unfortunately, it kind of decoyed, decoyed me for the rest of practice because I really looked out. I didn't find any other deep spots. Uh, the first day of the tournament, I, I pushed it really, really hard, thinking that if I just got these fish to fire, I could get really big in a hurry, and uh, it didn't happen. So I kind of got behind the eight ball. But, um, you know, with this, I was throwing 14 pound because there is uh, standing timber out there. So I was throwing 14 pound FC sniper. And cranking, I was throwing 12 pound FC sniper on that 2.5. And uh, normally I throw 10, but, you know, again, here, 12 is still really light. But, uh, I probably could have gone to a 14 or even a 16 because it, it you know, I didn't, really didn't need to get that crankbait down too deep. Um, but when those fish didn't bite, then I went to the bank and I threw a, a wacky rig worm. In fact, I threw the the Yamamoto. It's the Nam Yamamoto and Daiwa collaboration. It's that Nako skinny worm. And I threw that for fish that I could see cruising. I threw that on my drop shot rod, the Tattoo Elite drop shot rod. And I threw it on the Tattoo LT reel. I use a 4,000 size reel and uh, 10 pound um, uh, X plasma um, sunline. And then uh, what was funny is here, because of the uh, stuff on the water, plus the bigger fish, um, the cover in the water and the big fish, I went with a 16 pound FC sniper leader. I wanted that heavy line on there just for, I, if I snagged one around some of that timber or stump or something, I wanted that extra strength to you know help not break the line. And then I threw that Gamagatsu Stinger hook that I designed, the, the weedless stinger that I designed for Gamagatsu that's, that's great for throwing a wacky rig. 
And uh, through that, I also threw a, a real light colored worm to where I could work it kind of fast and see the fish come up and boil on it and I knew where the bed was. And uh, that's kind of how I'd search for them. I flipped a little bit as well. And when I flipped, I flipped either a, a, a six inch Sanko uh, with a, with a 3 16 ounce uh, arc tungsten weight, um, or I went with a, uh, the bigger flapping hog, uh, green pumpkin, and then uh, went with a quarter ounce weight, uh, arc tungsten weight as well, the Gamagatsu four aught uh, straight shank flipping hook. And then with that, I went with Ish's flipping stick. You know, if you're gonna flip, you know, pick up what a guy designed that's really good at flipping. You know, same thing with a frog. If I'm gonna throw a frog, I'm gonna use the rod that a guy that's really good at throwing a frog uh, designed. So the 7.6 Ish Monroe flipping stick from Daiwa Tattooly Elite. And then the Tattoo Elite flip and pitch reel, which is really, really, really good for flipping. Has the big power knob on it, 100 millimeter handle. And then I went with 22 pound shooter. And then uh, the last thing I did to catch fish is I sight fished. And when I sight fished, I just used my medium heavy Daiwa rod. And uh, it's just a multi-purpose rod. It's one that I use for almost everything. And Tattoo Elite uh, bait casting reel. I used a eight gear ratio reel. And I used 20 pound sniper. And uh, I went with a, a Yamamoto Zeiko. Uh, that's a really good bed bait, which people don't really understand. I mean, it's not just a good uh, chatterbait trailer. It's a really good bed bait. And I take a green pumpkin, dye the tail chartreuse, put on a quarter ounce arc tungsten sinker, and uh, really works well on bed. So when I saw one on a bed, that's what I used to catch them off the bed. So, um, you know, all in all, it was a tough tournament, but uh, I was kind of right there on the, the cusp of catching them. You know, it was really close to figuring it out, getting it dialed in. And unfortunately I didn't, and I'm moving on. But uh, all the stuff is gonna be on my wish list for Tackle Warehouse. So everything's available right there. Just check out my wish list and everything I used here at Lake Fork will be on there. And uh, right there, click and check out, be ready to go.